Hey everyone and welcome to the Open3D Engine YouTube channel. I'm Chanel Mascara from the AWS Game Tech team, and in this video Alex Demargin will begin the process of setting up the multiplayer sample project. This includes creating auto components and creating our first level. Now before we begin, remember that in consideration of the open source nature of Open3D Engine, the O3D community is constantly making important updates to the engine, so make sure to check the description below for any updated content or tutorials. Thanks, and I'm going to pass this off to Alex now. Before we begin, you should have O3DE from the development branch and its necessary software components installed. Next, familiarity with the Git version control system and Git commands will also be helpful. Similarly, CMake and its commands will also be used. If you need additional help with any of these topics, please visit the links in the description below. Let's begin by cloning the multiplayer sample project from GitHub. You can find the project at the following link. Now that we're on the multiplayer sample GitHub page, let's copy the link that will allow us to later clone our multiplayer sample. In the center of the page, select the code button. Then, click on the Copy Repo Address button to the right of the web address. Now let's exit the page and navigate to your drive of choice to clone our project. For me, this is the C drive. I selected this drive since it's the same location in which my O3DE engine currently resides. I tend to keep all of my projects in their own folder titled Projects. So go ahead and create a new folder and call it Projects. Once your Projects folder is created, navigate within it and open your favorite command line tool. I'll be using PowerShell for this video. An easy way to do this is to type PowerShell in the address bar of the Explorer window. Once PowerShell opens, type the following git command to clone your project. Now that we've cloned the multiplayer sample, we need to create a multiplayer auto component. Auto components provide a convenient way to create multiplayer components, which stay synchronized across the network. Let's create our first auto component by navigating to our autogen folder. My folder can be found at the following path. Within the autogen folder, we want to create a new XML file called mpdemocontroller.autocomponent.xml. For the sake of time, let's duplicate one of the auto component files and rename it. You can select any auto component file you like. For now, I'm going to copy and paste the network weapons component file. Once duplicated, rename it. Pay special attention to the way you name your file. We'll need to use the exact casing in the next step. We want to edit the MP demo controller file so that it integrates certain network input data, like forward and backward movement. So open the MP demo controller file in your favorite text editor. Once open, let's edit our file so that it only requires the necessary information. At the top of our component, locate the name property and rename it so that it matches the name of our file minus the .autocomponent.xml. Next, for the override component property, enter false, since it will not be required for this demo. Conversely, for the override controller property, we'll set its value to true, signifying that we'd like to generate a base class so that the developer implementing the multiplayer component will be responsible for supplying the final derived controller used in the runtime. Since override controller is set to true, the path relative to the gem root of the header containing the concrete implementation must be entered for the override include property. Here you can see I set my path to point to the MP demo controller .header file. We only need one component relation, so delete the component relations on lines 12 and 13. Essentially, a component relation describes how various components may be related to the component being described. We'd like to name the related component to be network character component. So let's enter that text in the name property. Next, let's update the namespace to multiplayer and update the path to where the network character component header file will live. Many of the other elements in this file are unnecessary for what we'd like to do. So let's delete lines 16 through 29, leaving only a single network input. Now let's update our network input's three parameters. I'd like to use this data to aid in the movement of my character. So for the data type, let's enter float. Next, the name of my movement will be an abbreviated forward and back. And for the initial value, let's set it to a float value of 0, 0.0. Now let's duplicate this line with only one change. And that's to set its name to left and right, because we'll be using it for the horizontal movement. Now that we've edited our auto component file, we need to let CMake know about its location so that it is included in the building of our application. Back in our hard drive, locate the multiplayer sample underscore files.cmake file. My file is located at the following path. Once found, open the file in your favorite text editor. Let's insert the path of our MP demo controller XML file just below the prefab interface header file. Once done, don't forget to save this file. Next, we'll open the project manager, add the multiplayer sample project, and start the build process. Once open, click on the add project button, then navigate to the O3DE multiplayer sample folder. Then click on the select folder button. Back in the project manager, click on the build project dropdown button. 
and select Build Now. Once selected, the Building Multiplayer Sample dialog box will appear. Click on the Yes button. Take special note that once the project completes building, you'll get an error. This is a necessary step in the build process. Once the project failed to build dialog box appears, click the No button. Currently, it's not important for us to see the log file since we'll be going over it in a moment. Now, the reason for this step and the subsequent build error was for the generation of an instructional file called mpdemocontroller.autocomponent.h. My file can be found at the following path. Additionally, your file might be found in a different location, so implementing a simple window search may be required. After careful examination of the mpdemocontroller.autocomponent header file, you'll find contained within it instructions on the creation of two additional files. Let's create those files together now. Make sure to keep this file open because we'll be using it later. We'll be adding the aforementioned files within our components folder. My folder can be found at the following path. Once there, make sure file name extension is checked on so that you're replacing the entire file name, including this extension. Then create two text files. Rename one mpdemocontroller.h and the other mpdemocontroller.cpp. Then open both in your favorite text editor. For me, I opened all three files in Visual Studio. I'll be switching between these files and copying and pasting the necessary sections per the mpdemocontroller.autocomponent.h instructions. Let's begin with the mpdemocontroller.h file. Scroll down and copy the header code found roughly between lines 40 and 86. Make sure not to miss any of the corresponding curly braces. Next, open the mpdemocontroller.h file, paste the code, and save it. Return to the mpdemocontroller.autocomponent file. Scroll down a little bit further and copy the CPP code found roughly between lines 88 and 114. Again, make sure not to miss any of the corresponding curly braces. Paste this code into the mpdemocontroller.cpp file. Make sure to save this file as well. Let's return to the project manager and build our project. Back in the project manager, if you don't see the build button on the multiplayer sample icon, select the additional options icon indicated by three horizontal lines in the bottom right corner of our multiplayer sample icon. Then click on the build button. Lastly, on the building multiplayer sample dialog box, click the yes button, confirming our selection. Once building your project is completed, click on the open editor button. It may take a moment for the project to open and for the asset processor to complete processing the various project components. Now that our editor is open, click on the create new button. A new level pop-up box will appear. Let's name our level MP demo level. Then click the okay button. And that concludes this video for now, where we began the process of setting up the multiplayer sample project. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more multiplayer related content. We'll see you next time.